So much fun. After landing at the airport, I walked outside and immediately found the bus that would take me into town. It wasn't a long trip into the city, and it reminded me of how desolate the landscape in this country is. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Dude, look at this. <laughs> you got your hair cut too. I know, right? Excuse me. That's, just hand that to me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. My friends Colin and Lydia moved here from the U.S. a few months ago. So they met me at the bus station to take me back to their house. Oh, we're so excited you're here. <laughs> Great. You've been here before, right? A long time ago? Yeah, six years ago. And then we spent the evening relaxing, going on a walk through part of the city, and then watching sports and playing card games before we all turned in for, sure, for a night of much needed sleep. But look, a lot of the stuff that I could do... And the next morning we slept in, which is hard not to do in Iceland at this time of year, considering the sun doesn't rise until about 10.30. We took it easy the first morning because I was still tired from the trip, but we started making plans for exciting day trips later in the week. Then Colin had to run some errands. So we went to get coffee and went to the supermarket. And after that, we went to a board game store, which has a basement area in which you can play any of their hundreds of board games while you sit and hang out in the warmth during the cold, dark Icelandic winters. Oh yeah, we don't need to play that. You played Bang? I love that game. The kind of place you just lose track of time. And we went by a gallery of a famous photographer who has also made Iceland his home. That's going to be Yeah, I mean, it's not luck, it's like time, right? Yeah. And then, like, you have photos I mean, like. Obviously, there's skin. Sure, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But it's, there's like a lot of. Uh, in the actual show. And when we got back to the apartment, I sat looking at more photos from the photographer while Colin made dinner. And that's how we spent most evenings, making food, watching sports, and playing games. Get there, holy, what a play. In zone, lad. And as the long night of winter deepened, we discussed the plan for the following morning. Colin and I met back in 2015. I had just gotten a job at a gym in Alabama. And after playing pickup basketball with and against each other a few times, walked into my office, sat down, and just started talking. I don't remember exactly, but I'm fairly certain that we spent basically the rest of that day together and many days after. That's the kind of person Colin is and that I aspire to be. Someone who can instantaneously become friends with anyone they meet. Don't fall and die, it says. I'm so glad I have a translator here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even though we don't talk super frequently, whenever we do see each other, it's like no time has passed. When I arrived here in Iceland, we immediately were chatting about two years ago when he visited me in Albania. Wow, where are all the tour buses? 
Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, you saw it. You're going back to the car now? Well, I did go on this trip to visit Colin and Lydia. I also went to see what Iceland had to offer during the end of November. I really wanted to take some good photos while I was there. Since the last time I went, I didn't get many that I'm happy with. And after the waterfall, we headed back to Reykjavik because Colin and Lydia both had to work. But as we drove back, the sun started peeking through and lighting up the clouds like cotton candy. We couldn't drive for more than a few minutes without me telling Colin to stop so I could jump out and take another photo. <laughs> The daylight hours in Iceland at this time of year are few, and during the entire time, the sun sits low in the sky, giving incredible light for all five hours that is shining. Holy cow. This is oh, crazy. So I went with Colin to work and watched him coach. And then later I got the chance to play basketball for the first time in a very long time. And while my shooting wasn't up to my standard, I was surprised at how in shape I was. I haven't been running or playing sports at all recently, but I guess all the walking and going to the gym has kept me in the condition that I can run up and down a basketball court without dying. And then I went to pick up my rental car, which will give me the freedom over the next few days to go out on adventures of my own while Colin and Lydia are both working. And I'm so thankful for the supporters I have on Patreon, because without their help, I would not have been able to afford this car. They are what makes these adventures possible. And if you'd like to know more about supporting me on Patreon, visit the link in the video description. And then, the real adventure began. I got up when it was still dark. It was probably about 8.30 in the morning, but it felt much earlier. And after scraping the frost off the windshield, I drove through the dawn, completely blown away by the Icelandic landscapes through the window. She grasped what we were trying to do, what we were trying to build here. She felt that Blue Ribbon was unique, that it might become something special. And she wanted to do what she could to be a part of it, which proved to be a I'd never before said goodbye to a true partner. After a quick pit stop at a bakery on the side of the road and a pizza roll, I moved on. And as the sun started lighting up the bottoms of the clouds, I arrived at the first destination, the black sand beaches of Vic.
and as I headed to the viewpoint overlooking the beach, the sun started to peek through the clouds, bathing the frozen ground with its golden rays for the first time that day. <laughs> this view, I can't even believe this. This is unbelievable. It seemed like I wasn't the only one excited by the warmth of the sun. Iceland is known for its waterfalls, so that was the next thing on my agenda. Looking for waterfalls, Lydia had given me some tips on where to find some good ones, as well as reminding me of which of the popular ones might still be worth going to despite larger crowds. I don't typically like going to places that are overrun with people, which is part of the reason why I decided to come to Iceland at the end of November. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for the country, I'm not sure there's ever a time in Iceland that doesn't have tourists. Oh, I'm loving this. That being said, I can imagine that some of these places would have been far more populated had I been here during the summer months. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. That's amazing. Oh, my goodness. There's something about waterfalls. I don't know what it is, but like, you see, when I see these massive waterfalls, I'm on my way to another one right now. When I see these massive waterfalls, it just puts the biggest grin on my face. And like the funniest thing about it, it's just water. Like literally just water coming off of a cliff. And it's just the coolest thing ever. Oh, this country is so much fun. One of my least favorite signs I see anywhere. See what this yellow one says right here? It's so frustrating. break those rules, I'm in someone else's country. If they post that there shouldn't be a drone, I'm not gonna fly a drone, that's fine with me. Just annoying. Because this place seems like it'd be better captured with a drone.
Look at this. This is crazy. The icicles formed underground. Well, under the top of the deck. You can see it right here. That's insane. Iceland is also known for its geothermal activity. So after a couple of waterfalls, I set off in search of a nice warm stream to soak in for a bit. So I sat in the steaming river and took in the moment. I watched the light of the sun bounce off the snowy hills and observed the steam rising from the thermal water. I thought about my life and how fortunate I am to be able to make trips like this. And I reflected on my time here in Iceland. It would shortly come to a close, but I thought about how thankful I am that Colin and Lydia opened up their home and their lives to me. Their lives are busy and their apartment is tiny, but despite that, they willingly let me sleep on the couch in the middle of their one room home. got so quiet. The wind stopped. The only sound is this waterfall that's just down there. Wow. I don't hear a thing. Shoo. Unreal. Unreal. We gotta hustle. We gotta hustle. Sun's dropping fast. But then I found myself in a race with the sun. It had only ever barely made it over the horizon, and now it was getting ready to go back into hiding for the next 18 hours or so. But I still had one more stop I wanted to make. A waterfall that I went to back in 2017, during my first trip to this country. But Lydia had mentioned another waterfall within a five minute walk from the main one. So it was me against the sun, trying to get there in time to be able to witness it in the light and get some good photos. Thankfully, the road was pretty straight and flat, and it didn't take too long. When I came here before, about six years ago, this shop right there, I'm pretty sure we parked right there. Maybe we parked right where I'm standing, but we parked somewhere about right here and camped, and none of this was here. I know tourism is big in this country, but it just keeps getting bigger. It's crazy. Like, look at this view. I'll show you the photo that I took from my, from my tent last time I was here.
and I moved on past the main falls where the majority of other people were standing and taking photos to try and find this other, more hidden spot that I had been informed of. This view right here is insane. The clouds lighting up like that, waterfall on the left, unreal. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a day. <sighs> Unreal, man. Look at that. And then it was back to the main waterfall Phew. to snap a few more photos before the sun dropped into the sea. And then, Iceland decided to show off, as if a grand finale for my time here. One of the highest probabilities of northern light sightings that Colin or Lydia had ever seen had us leaving the house at 10 p.m. and looking for a pocket of darkness near the city. We hopped around to a few locations, trying to find the best show that we could. The cold air stung our skin and numbed our toes, but in that moment, there was nowhere else I'd rather be. And as it turned out, it wasn't until we were standing in the park right next to their apartment at 2 a.m. after hours of chasing that the dancing finally began. This. <laughs> what the? There we go. What on earth? This is what you it's, wanted. There it is. It's just all over the sky. It is starting to snake. I told you, we just needed one. We just needed one to pop off and snake like this. Dude. There you go. Oh my God. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll what? be back soon. <laughs>